Learning to code is a challenge, even more so when you have a full-time job or if you have other responsibilities. So when I was learning to code, I had to make some real big changes in my schedule because I was working in account management and I had a schedule from eight to five every day, Monday through Friday. So in this video, I'm gonna explain the things that I changed to learn how to code with a full-time job and other responsibilities. So that way you can have an idea of things that you can look at and changing in your schedule. So you can try to learn how to code a lot faster to get your next job. So I mentioned this before in other videos that once I learned that you can get into software without having having to have a computer science degree. I was pretty motivated to try to get into the field, but at the same time, I was a bit discouraged and anxious because I didn't know how I was gonna be able to learn a new skill when I was working full time. I had a life outside of work. I would be focused on going to the gym and playing different sports and things like that. And I didn't wanna give up my entire lifestyle to learn a new skill. But then I started to realize that nine times out of 10, when we say we don't have time for things, we really do. We just have to make time for those things. And that's what I started to focus on. So it was kind of funny, you know, we look and see how much time we spend on social media and just scrolling mindlessly and it might not seem like a lot but when you start to do this multiple times throughout the day this can easily add up to maybe an hour or so of time that you could have been using on something else i remember vividly like hating my job so much when i would get home the only thing i wanted to do was play video games or to watch something on netflix just to try to get my mind off from everything that i was going through throughout the week and it's good for entertainment it's good to you know not have to focus on everything that you're stressed about but at the same time if you have a goal that you're trying to complete you have to max maximize your time as best you can. So once I made that decision that I was gonna learn how to code, I told myself that temporarily, I wasn't gonna focus on video games and Netflix and things like that. I needed to focus on my responsibilities first, which was whatever project that I was building, whatever course that I was going through, whatever lessons that I was trying to learn that day. And once I got done with that, then I would focus on my relaxation and my enjoyment before the day ended. Now I'm not gonna make it seem that I was just sitting there as soon as I get off from work and I would just code all night long until it was time to go to sleep. That will burn you out quicker than you think. And two, it's just not good to have your mind so wired before you try to go to sleep anyway. So I would make sure I would still set some time aside before I go to bed just to relax and just hang out. But after I took care of my responsibilities as far as whatever I was trying to learn that day. So once I started to be more mindful about the time that I was spending after I got home from work, I worked in an office job, luckily, and I really took advantage of my lunch break. I made extra time to study just by taking advantage of my lunch break. And this could be another 30 minutes to maybe even an hour of 100% focus for whatever that I was trying to learn at the time. I was that determined that I wanted to complete this goal of getting into the software field. So when everybody would go out for lunch and they would invite me to go eat and spend all this money and things like that, I would bring my own lunch and I would stay in the office. I would eat as quickly as I could and I would focus on whatever lesson that I had. And this was an amazing time because the office was quiet, everybody was gone, and I could add another extra hour or so throughout the day just from staying there. So when you think about that, I have another five hours throughout the week that I'm learning just from not going to eat lunch with everybody else. And by taking advantage, by adding this extra 30 minutes to an hour a day, I started to see my skill set rapidly increase. Another thing that you need to do is you have to find some type of community. And I wish I would have realized this a lot sooner when I started on my journey to get into the software field because I worked in silo for a long time. And the times that I would go through periods of discouragement and not even being sure if this was for me or not, I had to go through it by myself. I didn't really have anybody to talk to or even to get their opinion on as to if I, what I was going through was normal or not. So the first big thing about having a community is support and motivation. Now I've talked before about how motivation is a very temporary feeling to where at some point you have to have discipline take over. But in this point, I'm specifically talking about motivation as in being sure that what you're working towards is worth it. Being part of a community gives you a support system of like-minded people that are trying to complete the same goals as you are. So you can get encouragement, advice, and motivation during those times to where you feel stuck or discouraged. Then you have access to resources and other tools that you may not be aware of. So most communities have a pretty diverse background of people that are trying to get into the software field. And they may know about different tools and things that you may not know about. So by being in one of these communities, you start to get advice and access from all different kinds of expertise, all different levels of knowledge and different levels of experiences. So you'll see people recommending different websites and tutorials and different tools that can help speed up your learning that you may not have been aware of before. So when I started in 2015, there were some communities and but these days you have different Discord groups, you have different Facebook groups. You have all different kinds of groups and resources from people that have committed to get into this field just like you have. And once you do join these communities, you'll see that the next step is something that you almost have to take advantage of if you want to speed up your path for learning how to code, which is you have to start waking up a little bit earlier than you do now. Even if it's just 30 minutes, the morning is a golden opportunity for you to get some extra time for learning. Usually it's pretty quiet, especially if you have a family. And this is time that you can dedicate to being 100% focused without many distractions. Because many 
times we can't control what happens throughout our day. Even if I mentioned that it's good if you can take advantage of your lunch break. What if you work in construction or if you're doing trucking or something, you don't have an opportunity to just sit on a computer and work during your lunch break. Or what if you have other responsibilities and you have to leave the office to take care of during your lunch break. The early mornings is another great opportunity for you to account for these type of issues to make sure you get some extra time each day on learning how to code. But the thing about waking up early in the morning is if you have to make sure that you take care of your body. If you're going to bed at 12 and 12 30 and you're trying to wake up an hour earlier you're not going to be able to focus you're going to be distracted and you're not going to be ready to learn so if you're going to start waking up earlier you need to make sure that you're going to sleep a little bit earlier so that way when you do wake up that you're rested and you're alert because just saying that hey i spent 30 minutes learning i spent 30 minutes studying if you don't remember or retain anything it's really a waste of time so take care of your body if you're going to start waking up early but i can promise you if you start doing this you'll start to see your skill set increase a lot faster because you're making more time throughout the day to speed up your process Another thing that I did was I reduced the amount of outings that I would have on the weekends. Now, I'm not the type of person that will tell you that you can't go out anywhere, that you have to be locked into your room, coding nonstop, because, I mean, that's that's not realistic. And two, you'll end up hating your life anyway and hating code at the same time. But I did reduce the amount of outings that I had because you have two full days that you can take advantage of to keep learning more. So, yes, some people would invite me out for different things, and I would tell them that, unfortunately, I couldn't make it because I had to spend time working and I was learning and studying and things like that. And I would feel, you know, kind of left out at times but I knew that this was a temporary thing as long as I could reach my goal then once I got my job then I could start going back out and kind of getting my routine back together but for this temporary time period you have to make some sacrifices and that's the only way that you're going to be able to do it if you have a lot of responsibilities or if you have a full-time job see where you can fit in some extra time and it doesn't even have to be all day even if it's just an extra hour or two that you can squeeze in on the weekends take advantage of your weekends and then remember that this is a long-term goal you have to have a very firm reason as to why why you want to get into this field why you want to spend the time to study and learn something completely new to you because if your reason isn't strong enough you won't make the sacrifices that you need to make the extra time to learn the skill so my reason was definitely i didn't have a lot of money at the time but i really started to think about my future it was good to try to get a job with a bigger salary but i knew if i was to get into this field i would just have a brighter future overall as far as having a career potentially having better benefits better retirement packages and things like that and that kept me focused and that kept me disciplined on everything that i needed to do and sacrifice and everything else in order to get into this field but I won't pretend that there weren't a lot of times to where I wanted to quit and I remember one time specifically at the very beginning to where I did quit for a bit because I felt like I wasn't getting anywhere and I felt like it was just too difficult to achieve this but then I started remembering exactly what got me started in the first place and I knew that it was worth it as long as I kept going and I didn't give up I would be able to reach my goal because a lot of times it's not always who's the smartest that reaches the goal a lot of times it's who's the most persistent and who's the one that's most disciplined so even though you have a lot going on right now and you feel like you don't have the time, think about the sacrifices that you can make right now because it'll definitely be worth it later on. So that's what I have for you in this video. If you like the video, please like the video and subscribe to the channel for more content like this.